broadcasting alive from the Green Room Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. It's the At Home Show with Josh Carey and David Bates, celebrating 25 years of home and garden wisdom. Without further ado, your hosts, Josh Carey and David Bates. Oh yeah, welcome in everybody. It's Saturday morning. It means it's time for the At Home Show. Good yeah. morning, David Bates. Good morning, Josh Carey. How are you today? Well, you know what? I think I'm doing well. How about yourself? Finding the frog hair split down the middle. Well, that's just wonderful. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to take a diversion mm-hmm. from what we normally do because I just Why? realized we yak the entire time and I didn't get my weather ready. So oh! we're going to go ahead and bring in uh-huh. our uh, studio audience. Oh, no, who is not an audience. They are <laughs> active participants. <laughs> Caroline Gant from the Lodge Pit, as they were. And good morning, guys. And we're uh, welcome in today. And we're a uh, we are in preparation uh, for, actually, we're pretty much already there here at the At Home Show and at Bates mm-hmm. Nursery for this second round of cold weather this week. And now that I've got the uh, forecast up here, we'll just go with that. Okay, and then that. today is Saturday. Uh, as you can see here at the Bates Nursery Station, it's 30 degrees. So it's a, it's a chilly day. I think we're it's talking 47 we might make today for the high. That's maybe optimistic. Mm-hmm. 21 for the overnight low. Now, if you live in the, uh, a rural area, such as where um, Bates Nursery is, we generally subtract 5 degrees from that. So that uh-huh. means we'll be looking at 16 degrees out here. Uh, and for tender plants, this just in, not good. good. Not good for mm-hmm. them. So uh, we've got more of the same tomorrow, only 41 for the high. Again, uh, 21 degrees for the forecast overnight low on Sunday night. Monday morning, mm-hmm. uh, we do have one more night of or an early morning of cool temperatures. Monday, 54, 27. And then finally on Tuesday, things begin to moderate a bit. 60 degrees for the high, 47 for the low. So whatever that you're going to be doing, if you're going to be uh, – purchasing plants today or if you're going to be Good if you've already that. planted plants and they've got a lot of tender growth on them and you're a little concerned about it this is the time you need to be acquiring your old sheets and uh, the, kind the, of bringing those together the you egyptian may, cotton ones yeah it's now this is not going to be the kind of weather that will uh. kill things but it certainly can burn back new growth mm. on that we have a slew of questions uh, today on well, the at home show, you need to quit ordering all this cold weather. Well, we have uh, we thought Stop we had it. we thought we had the order canceled, uh-huh. but apparently uh, they kept w- the deposit too. <laughs> anyway, so we've got this one mm-hmm. coming through this weekend. It's a uh, a great time to plan. It's also a good time to acquire things. But you, if you're going to get plants that, uh-huh. that you're in all questioned about, stick them in the garage or in the basement until Put them Tuesday. on dining room table, for yeah, pity's sake. I wouldn't put them on dining I want them in a cool but not a warm spot. I don't want them in the house. I want them in a you know uh-huh. an unheated but somewhat protected area. So anyway, 30 degrees uh, currently here. We'll look quickly at the uh, mm-hmm. weather station here. We're now uh, over 12 inches of rain, 12.3. When we've had uh, uh, almost three inches of rain for the month, two point, uh, 2.87 yes. and uh, nearly an inch for the week. And um, so Stop we're... that too. So, well, the moisture is good with respect to... Uh, Keeping the plants well hydrated, and that's a, that's an important thing during this yeah. phase of uh, mm-hmm. uh, weather that we're going through. So makes the job sites really and, nasty. And I will say uh, this additionally that uh, all of this has uh, stimulated a lot of questions from a from, Boku, a, from a lot Jones. from a lot of our viewers and a lot of uh, mm-hmm. folks who are if you're a new viewer to the show welcome and we appreciate your questions and of course i put a link out there in my newsletter every yes. week and we had a lot of people uh respond to that this week we also have a lot per usual on our instagram and facebook page mm-hmm. so we're going to dive right in because we have Probably more than we can get to, even with consolidation. We we probably are uh, approaching fifty 
<sighs> questions out there. 50, 50, 50. So that's going to be tricky. I'm going to shut up now and say, <laughs> good uh-huh. morning, guys. <laughs> Jump on in here. Let's see what we got going on. By Who the way, are they over by the there, way, yeah. I already said that. Well, uh, Tyler Blankenship's right here yep. uh, alongside. And he's the guy that uh, <laughs> was. <laughs> hey. There he is. Hey, there he I is. did not introduce him. I will be uh-huh. reciting the Google question. Uh, all of them, I guess. No, yes. Google today. Google yeah, Google. So Google-like without further ado. Let's proceed with the questions and let's just get our good mornings out of the way here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Howdy. Great. We got good mornings out of the way. Let's start with a pine straw question. Pros and cons of pine straw versus regular mulch in beds. It is a regular mulch. That's just aesthetic. Well, there you go. Yeah. That's just aesthetic. I mean, some people like the look of it. Some people don't. When it comes to weed prevention, I mean, it does pretty well. It's mm-hmm. not, you know, a, a, a perfect solution or anything to getting all your weeds out, but it works. It's easy. It's easy. Mulch. The, one of the pro things is it's a much easier to easy. uh, install yeah. than yeah. Um, shredded mulches. It's much less lower density. So on the negative side, it doesn't have quite the ability to, to hold moisture such as a shredded material would. So, mm-hmm. But it's a good choice. I use it at my house. Mm-hmm. I like the look. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a nice one. All right, this is a touchy subject for Uh-oh. Austin, so let's get it out of the way early. <laughs> when to prune boxwoods and how often? I know yours <laughs> don't look great right now. Typically, when it comes to boxwood, you only have to prune them roughly once a year, and that changes a little bit later in the season. But really, you just need to get them. You know, it, it depends on how uh, picky you are about how tight your boxwoods flush. Some people get them really, really tight. Um, you know, early in the spring. So we're going to go ahead and do this, you know, pretty much now. Your boxwoods are actually starting to, well, some of them are starting to flush. Some of them um, are not. And, and some and of them are not. And, yeah. and I will tell you, I've got I've got three, four, actually, uh, Bucks of Simpavire, it's just Native American sure boxwood yeah. at my house. I have two four-by-fours that are on either side of a uh, portica share at my, at my house. Gesundheit. And one of them is pushing out new growth. The other one's dead, mm-hmm. and they're they're ten feet apart. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the confounding nature of what we're all going to be dealing with as we go through this. It's it's not always clear why some things make it, and sometimes things don't. So. Mm-hmm. Portica mm-hmm. syndrome. Yeah, that's that maybe it, maybe that's it. It is. <laughs> But yeah, when it, portica shame, <laughs> portica shame. That's mm. it. <laughs> it's carport, folks. Uh, yeah, but anyway, when it comes to pruning them right before they flush in the spring, typically, so around February time is generally the time we go in and tighten them up, and then they leaf out nice and tight for you. And they look great when they flush, or this no, year they're no, dead. They're oh, flushed. No, yeah. yours aren't dead. Yeah, I think they are. Okay, let's get to some Google questions. Okay. All right. Switching back. <laughs> All right. To me. There yeah. we go. Okay. I bought a young ginkgo tree from y'all and planted it last year. I'm nervous with all the with all the front it has passed on, but I am not sure when they should start budding. Just looking for some health. Okay. Health. So ginkgos specifically are like one of the toughest plants in the world. Yeah, they like uh, they are a one of the original trees. Yeah. Yeah. They made it through ice ages. <laughs> yes. They live with dinosaurs. Yeah. Like they can be ex- through extreme cold and, and nothing's wrong. So look, ginkgo specifically as well have some of the fattest buds in the tree world. Like they're huge. Now, they're not going to be green yet, probably, and they're not cracking leaves yet, but they are going to be substantial looking chunky buds on the stem. So if you have that right now, the good you're bud, probably man. fine. Yep. So, all right. Yeah. So next. Next. Sorry to keep Next. pushing it today, but we got a lot to yes, get to. We, we want yeah. everybody to feel like that they're getting their question answered. We got, a, we got a couple of Akuba questions on the Google Docs, so I'm going to combine them. Our Akuba leaves are very brown from the freeze, but lots of the stems are still green. Are they likely to come back higher up, or will they need to be pruned at the bottom? Great question, mm-hmm. and we have to wait mm-hmm. and see. Me and Tyler and Caroline did a video uh, this week on our little no down thing for the Instagram, and we looked at David's Akuba, which we featured a long time ago whenever right. we first showed the deep freeze. And his Akuba in the back took a shot. I mean, it looks horrible too. And there's, but he's still got a lot of green stems on his, and they are not leafing out from those stems quite yet. Now, I do think that they will. Um, what we did notice though is that we pulled back a bunch of old foliage down at the base, and there's new growth coming from the roots. Right. So sure. that's a good mm-hmm. sign. Yeah. Um, My and, plan is to cut them back halfway. Yeah. For starters, 
and then see if they'll break out at that point, and then it may be required to go back heavier a bit later. And that's really the only reason you wouldn't prune right now is just trying to determine how far back you got to go. Uh, more often than not, you're gonna have to you got to go back fairly fairly severe yeah. on a lot of things. Probably are this year. And if you are seeing black stems, you know, from the top like down halfway, if it's black, it's not coming Cut back it. from that, okay? But if you are seeing green, let's leave those green stems up because I do think they're going to crack back from those green stems. There just seems, still seems to be a lot of life in the stems. Uh, Akuba are deceivingly tough plants. They are. Yeah. They are. Cool. All right. All right. Next. Uh, <laughs> Ligustrum recurvifolium. All three of mine were eight feet tall. After the Christmas freeze, the leaves are brown and completely off of two. How long do I wait to see if were, it comes back before were, were I take Were being the operative word. Yes. yes. Uh, there, uh, Ligustrum recurvifolium is you know it's a wax leaf privet, an evergreen type. Except they're not evergreen when you have a zone five Freeze. winter event on a zone seven plant. Yeah. That means. It won't be unusual for those to have to be cut back all the way to the ground. Probably uh, so. I think so as well. I mean, I would start off cutting them halfway back. I'd just go ahead and do that and get that much brush out of the way on those. Mm -hmm. uh, and it may require going further. The thing of it is, they may not come out at all. Yeah. If you leave half of it up there, it's a lot easier to dig the remainder out. So, yeah. <laughs> so take yeah. about half of it and get it out of the way, and then uh, you can you can better see what may come out of it and what your next action will be. You know so, what's funny? I have a wax leaf privet at my house that was there before I bought my home, and it I just let it be just because, but whatever. And it did the same thing. It dropped every single leaf, looked horrible. So I had a great opportunity to cut it to the dirt. Did you do oh. it? I did it. Okay. I chainsawed that mm. thing to the ground. Mm. I didn't want it there anyway. I didn't plan uh -huh. it. I don't really care about a privet all that much. So I went ahead and cut it, and I'm happy. But we'll see. I bet it still comes back from the roots. We'll see. Likely. You know. yes. Likely. Yep. All right. Uh, here's a cool question. Are there exceptions to the rule of seeing if there's green when you scrape a stem to see if a tree or shrub is still alive? Well, you're sure there's exceptions. <laughs> One of the exceptions mm -hmm. is, is is what uh, color of green is it and you can be easily deceived by scratching with a thumbnail and you say well that's green yeah but it's that olive looking green that's mm -hmm. very you should be seeing a very bright color of green so if it's that if it's hard to scratch and it's kind of a drab olive color like your jacket that's not a good sign no <laughs> yeah. you want yeah. to you want to see bright green uh, particularly at this time of year by this time next week, where we have gotten through this cold spell and things have again warmed up, you're going to get a lot better indication. Uh, but a great many things, you're just going to have to cut them back pretty severely and then hope you don't have to go further. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very okay. good. And He's going so back to <laughs> – no, I was checking our YouTube feed, and I'm not seeing our, our YouTube broadcast up there. But – uh, I planted a few endless summer hydrangea a few years ago, and the intense morning sun is just too much for them. Bum, Thinking bum. of replacing with panicle variety, can I dig up my endless summers and transplant them into large containers? Most definitely. We just got this question yesterday, actually, from a guest. If, it's a very, very common practice to grow macrophylla hydrangea endless summer collection in pots. It's almost... It's almost better, even. like They're a great little potted container plant. Um, they make a tight, full show. You can kind of protect them in pots a little bit. You can just store them in your shed or garage or something over the wintertime and don't even let them get you know, outside with all these horrible cold weather or whatever and let some of those stems die. We have to let those stems stay up because that's what they bloom off of, the old wood over the winter. So if those stems never get damaged and they leaf back out from those stems, and you'll get a great bloom. Um, so growing them in pots is a great idea. And also growing panicles in a more sunny environment is definitely the way to go. They, they can handle sun all day. Yeah, and they, they really are bad about flopping if they're getting too low a light. They'll live floppy. and they'll do okay, but they, they're not nearly as showy as they are when they get in a more sunny location. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a good idea. Good work. Mm -hmm. All right. And is there any chance of my 50 foot or more cryptomeria trees that are brown from the flash freeze will survive? Oh, 50, 50 foot. foot. That's, that's very. That's a that's big old tree. Very mature. Yeah, that's, that's very mature. Uh, I've seen some really bad indications. Um, doesn't look good for uh, cryptomeria. Doesn't look good for cupressus. 
Cupressus. Uh, uh, which are your like Arizona uh, Cypress or your and a lot of your Hinokis. <gasps> Uh, Ooh, those two genus in particular uh, have, have really took it on the chin. Yeah, and you know, a few weeks ago, I would have told you I thought Cryptomeria was coming back because I still saw some green stems. But like you're saying, David, they, they seem to be getting worse. Arizona yeah. Cypress as well. It was not as bad as it, two weeks ago or two, even three weeks ago. They didn't look as bad as they do now. And that's just... Uh, that was this year. I mean, that was all of a you know the, the broadleaf evergreens that got hit so bad, the laurels and the akuba and all that. They didn't show that ugly face until like a week later. You know, it took them a while to really show the damage. And mm -hmm. with these, with um, uh, what are we talking about? The big Cryptomeria. One? Uh, Cryptomeria. With the Cryptomeria. Yeah. <laughs> they, sorry, all these what genuses in my head. All this Latin. Um, yeah, the Cryptomeria. They they seem to be getting worse. So God, I hope they come back. But I'm not sure they're. They the, look dead they all do. over. The town. only good thing. About about them is that they are fast growers of cryptomeria and yeah. they'll get and they do get huge yeah uh, i would i would give them every opportunity i would not really seriously consider removing them until up into may yeah they need some time to be able to have consistent warm weather and when we're doing this roller coaster as i called it this week in the newsletter the double dip double uh we need to you know, be patient with them and let them have a continuous range of optimal growing conditions so that we can really see what's going to happen yeah the good news is the 50-foot tree's got a very extensive root system so that, that is you right know, yeah plants surprise me all the time like david said don't do anything till may at least it, it, it might be that you could really cut it back severely and have multiple shoots coming out that are basal breaks yeah it won't look the same but it would still be alive so 50 yeah. feet what do you got give to it. lose at this yeah. point exactly you might as well you know give it a few more weeks let's see what i, I would i would at least give plants two months yeah. if, if there's something that's a specimen like that that you got uh, questions about it's not gonna it's not gonna they're not gonna be less available yeah it looks think. like youtube dropped at 1344 did it yep well mm -hmm. i'm showing we're back online okay very good so okay. all right <laughs> thanks y'all for bearing with us on youtube we'll we'll work on those issues for next week uh, let's see i'm starting our first raised bed with my three girls ages one three and five this summer the Any beds or the girls the girls, I oh, think. Okay. Any quasi foolproof recommendations for it to be successful? When should we plant? Seeds or little plants? What should we plant? Does it hold on, Josh? <laughs> does it need gravel and whatnot on the bottom layer? Okay, let's, let's go with the the daddy who's got the three young ones that match closest <laughs> enough yes. age wise. Go, Austin. Tell <laughs> tell them what to do. All right, so do a mix of all of it. All yep. right, those kids need to see seeds popping up. There's nothing greater in the horticulture world than watching seeds germinate and then grow into full plants. So certainly try to start some seeds. Do some easy ones. You know, some of the peas and beans, things like that, they germinate very easily. Um, lettuces germinate easily, so do, definitely do some seeds. Some of those things that are a little bit harder to germinate, say like peppers or tomatoes, you may just come out and just buy some of those, and that's a fun experience. Bring the kids out here. Let them run around. Pick their plants, you know, yep. the ones that they want, and uh, set them out. And the biggest key is to just do it. Make sure you just do it. All of these plants grow. They really do, y'all. You don't understand how much a vegetable garden can really explode on the first season. Things like squash can go from a little plant like this to a massive plant like this within weeks. And it's amazing for kids to see that. So uh, teach them how to pull weeds. Um, you know. I know you've done that with your kids. Oh, they know how to pull weeds. Yeah. I used to pay for them. Yeah. Nickel a piece, man. That's I'm telling you. Yeah. Wow. My kids actually to like to pull weeds. Yep. Yeah. They feel like they're helping a lot, and they are. And it's a great little thing to do. It's work, but it's it's fun. Um, so just do it. Just make sure you do it. And when it comes to the bottom of your raised bed, you don't necessarily need gravel down there. I mean, if it's like a if it doesn't drain very well or something, I guess you could use it, but it's not really necessary. So make your raised beds, fill them with earth mix, and plant them with plants. That's the key. And just be out there and look at them every day. And little perfect, orange chrysanthemums. That is that is a perfect. Money. Perfect segue here. We'll yes. talk about Earthmic for just a moment. And if you're serious about gardening, and after all, who isn't? No, you want to get the best no, results no. without having to go to an extraordinary amount of effort. And that really comes down to what you're giving your plants to grow in. And when you use Earthmix garden products, you're assured of having the most viable, most mm -hmm. productive, yet it's totally organic. There are no, uh, there's no chemical fertilizers. There's no anything bad it's all 100 percent organic uh composted and blended right here in nashville tennessee so you need to 
ask for that one by name. Now, you're not going to find it at the big box stores because they don't have Earth Mix not offered there. It's only offered at uh, the best professional locations around. And if you want to get an idea of where to find it, go to earthmix.net. Click on the Find Earth Mix tab, and you click on that, a whole range of, um, of these uh, little pins will come up, and it'll show you over the uh, eastern U.S., Tennessee, Kentucky, up into southern Ohio and Indiana. And we've got mm-hmm. one coming soon in Alabama. Alabama. So, That's right. So we're, uh, we're really uh, especially pleased with uh, Austin. <laughs> oh, I think everyone just heard that comment Austin just had. <laughs> They're probably I give Tyler a hard time about they it. They probably he have Auburn Alabama. and Alabama. <laughs> it's not wow. a bad place. <laughs> He's actually giving Tyler grief because yeah, Tyler's from, it. he's a proud Huntsville <laughs> native, so uh-huh. and he, as well he should be. But if you want to grow plants, uh, get Earth Mix, and these are the great locations. You can zoom in or you can put in turn by turn directions here by putting your address in mm-hmm. right there. Just remember this success in gardening begins at the ground level when you use earth mix garden products and uh, whether you're doing it for indoors or outdoor use uh, caroline will be a a big proponent on using proganics i for indoor plants proganics o is an outdoor growing media uh, earth mix garden if you're doing a square foot type planter for your mm-hmm. vegetable plants it's a great thing to to use and it absolutely requires no amending at all it's ready to use right out of the bag good stuff yep. earth mix so Thank you for that moment, and we'll get back to the questions. All right. All right. Let's jump right in with percentage of hope for mature but northern exposed distillium and skip laurel in Green Hills. 15. Yeah. <laughs> skip, <laughs> skip laurel better than distillium, probably. Uh, yeah, but uh, I've, seen some, I've buffies, seen some. Skipping buffies in Green Hills, uh, though. Uh, you know, again, as we've already mentioned about other things, uh, the, the passage of time, mm-hmm. at least to this point, has only shown things to be getting uh, more obvious how extensive the damage was. That doesn't mean that they won't come back, but boy, they've taken it on the chin. A distillium, uh, it's the first time mm-hmm. we've really had cold weather. It was known all along that it was not of the hardiness of the hardiest of plants, I should say. Mm-hmm. But uh, about the the laurels, uh, mm. is a better chance of them coming out. Again, patience is it's worth your time to be patient. It's a virtue. Yeah. It's it's a virtue. In, wow, in, Josh, it, profound. Deep. <laughs> you uh. know, distillium takes a hit on normal winters a lot of times. Like the topmost sure. growth gets singed a little bit. So you have to typically prune back anyway. So. Mm-hmm. Distillium, I'm on the fence about still. Now, I will say, I got a picture yesterday. Joy Bovin, our perennial uh, gal down there, took a picture for me as she was walking around in Germantown, and she sent me a picture of some auto lucan laurels that were flushing. I mean, flushing from the top, like all of, it was a hedge of them, and they were right. all leafing back out, and it was from the tops. And that's oh. part of the benefit of living in a uh, urban setting is yes. that you get, while we go five degrees colder here they'll actually go five degrees warmer, warmer. there and those five degrees uh, i think were difference makers for a, a, yeah. a lot of things and they were but y'all think about it they, they had to deal with that they got horribly wrecked over the winter and now they're finally leafing back out yeah. and then tonight we got a 19 Burn. 20 degree night yeah. <laughs> so, oh, no. and they're at like an office building or something so if nobody goes out there and covers those well then there's there's shock number two for the winter time they're going to lose all those new leaves and then where are they going to come back from so i tell you it's 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 a it's a challenging run we're having here weather wise. <laughs> it is. Uh, all it right, really next is. question. So uh, related to that, uh, laurels. Sorry, let me cut the <laughs> camera back. Uh, what should we do about laurel bushes that look ninety nine percent dead after the freeze? There's a tiny bit of green left on the top of a couple of bushes, but they're covered with brown leaves that are falling off. Should I cut them way down to see if they will come back, or pull them out and start over? Uh, well, cutting them down is not going to let you know if they come back. I mean, they're going to either come back from the ground, from the middle, or from the top with the sticks on there. There's really nothing to do right now. I know they look horrible, and I know we've been telling y'all to wait, and y'all are getting tired of it. Because you want to do something. You want to be proactive. I get it. But we got to be patient with plants, with all plants. It, I mean, it doesn't yeah. matter what you do. It, it, plants are slow. They do things slowly. So don't really do anything yet. Yeah. I Give mean, if, time. if you just feel like you got to do something, if you want to go out there and cut them all halfway back, you know, don't, you know, cut them back as 
to the furthest amount that you think they might need to be. You don't don't leave the one sticking up that's got green on top. Go ahead and cut it back too. Mm-hmm. And again, as I mentioned earlier, in the event they don't come out, you've left your enough yourself enough it's a whole of lot easier to, to get it out of it. yeah you don't want to cut it down to the ground and have to dig that out yeah that's a lot harder you need something to be able to hold on to so we need to cover some peony questions yes right. well, we got a bunch okay. of well guys. actually we just got mm-hmm. one from youtube too uh-huh so here we go we're going to combine like four into one um do peonies need covering in temps in the low 20s mine are between six to 12 inches tall uh Here's another one from Google. My peonies mm-hmm. are a few inches out, out of the ground. Should I cover them this weekend? And what temperature should the buds be covered? So. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in. I don't think I've ever in my life not seen a year where peonies bloom. I mean, like you can see a little bit of leaf damage mm-hmm. if you don't cover them or whatever, but they're still going to push new leaves and they're going to push blooms out of that. I, like, I don't think any weather event has ever caused peonies not to bloom. Um, whenever they're up and just leafed right now, you right. know, they're not thinking about setting buds or blooms yet. So you might see a little bit of damage on the topmost growth, but peonies are extremely, extremely hardy Tough. and long lived plants. So yeah. if you got a hundred other things you got to cover and peonies are on the list, that's one that you could maybe, you know, let's put to the side. And if you don't get to it, you don't get to it. They're going to be fine. If you want to cover them to protect those leaves, certainly do it. But I like wonder I said, if he still has his pots that he put those in from. Because you just take it over and invert it over the top of yeah, it. Yeah, take a pot and put it over top of that. I, I've been doing that with yeah. my hydrangeas for the past few days, just large nursery pots. And I put some rocks, you know, rock or something on yeah. top to weight it down. And that's been plenty fine. Um, so, and, and one of the issues when you're covering things just, uh, in conditions like this, it, the wind tends to be very active. Yeah, yes. Yes. So, whatever you're using to cover with, you got to also come up with some way to affix it so that it won't blow off. Because yeah. that's always an issue and we deal with it here at the nursery we're going to be laying down more plants and covering them today we're uh, this is not a new deal for us no. uh, we've we've dealt with it many many times before it, it is never pleasant <laughs> but if you've got the materials on hand and you've got enough things to weight it down or figure out a way to affix it whether you're using like a, a, a squeeze type yeah, clamp yeah, or whatever yeah. you use that will help to keep it in place. And an inverted container does work well. The way I did it, I've got a couple that I do this with, is I've just got some um, bamboo stakes, and I take it and invert it over the top and go through the bottom holes and stick it right in there. You the go. Now, a cautionary statement yeah, about using them. things with that are dark plastic is that you up. don't want to put them on there too early in the day because it's going to start building up yes. heat. You don't really want it to build up heat, and you don't want to leave them on there too long tomorrow because – for the same reason, it'll mm-hmm. get hot and it'll scorch the plant. So, yep. uh, just be mindful of that when you're you're doing those kinds of things. You don't want to work against yourself. Nina commented on YouTube just now. I have a tree peony with ten inches of new growth stems and buds. I covered it last week, but it still froze some stems. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Then, uh, let's see here. Somebody was asking about the rain falling that fell last night means the sheets will be soaking wet when the temperatures drop below 32 degrees. Will that Uh, affect the plants at all? Good. Uh, It it creates a more impermeable barrier. So from that respect, of course, they're going to dry out during the day today. It, it, you know, the, they'll be on top. It it will not be negative where it actually makes contact. It could burn uh, through that because it effectively turns into a more of a plastic like film when you get a cloth wet like that. But if it's on there during the day or you've even pulled it off, it's going to dry, and that's not going to be the case. Another thing people might consider also is if you've got pine straw, you can pine straw up around those, and that's very effective Mm. as well. Mm -hmm. Smart. Yes. But yeah, if it were yes. going to be wet, I would say try your best to get the sheet above the foliage, you know, any of that new foliage. Yes. Off from actually physically touching it mm-hmm. uh, would be the best bet. Where I it use makes, my dining room chairs. Yeah, where it it's can, where it makes yeah. contact, it can freeze through, particularly if we're looking at mm-hmm. 20 degrees or even in the upper teens, like won't be, uh, won't be unheard of uh, over the next couple of nights. So just be mindful. So what do we do? What, what we covered this last week. Put plastic directly on your plants. No, we don't. Oh, Oh, no. We put our sheet down first. (laughs) 
<laughs> and then our plastic on top yeah. if you want to do that. Yeah, and you can do that, and it will give you a good insulating Let effect, it. particularly right. if that sheet is dry. Yes. So if you do that, it will give you a as good of a greenhouse effect as you can possibly the get. The Egyptian Provide, cotton sheets are preferred, though. Providing you can keep it weighted down. Yes. and Because there's a lot of heat that will radiate out of the ground overnight, and that's part of what you're capturing when you cover it like that is that uh, – the natural warmth that the earth has so mm-hmm. moving along 20 year old azalea bushes and shrubs look dead do i need to cut them back after chance of freezing is over or say goodbye and how much sun can a hydrangea take <laughs> oh wow <laughs> right. doubling it up yeah. doubling yeah. it up yeah wait on your azalea still yeah. wait mm-hmm. on them y'all azaleas are funny i talked about this before they look like nothing over the winter for them and then all of a sudden an explosion happens and then you get blooms atop of all of these shrubs. I mean, they, plus they're 20 years old. They've got an extensive root system. Uh, let them be for now. Like you said, we've waited this long. Why can't you wait another month? And it won't be unusual on the azaleas if they don't flower at all. Maybe all of your terminal buds, your flower buds have, have gotten frozen out. Doesn't mean that new leaves cannot uh, recur from those. So leave them up there, as Austin mm-hmm. said. Let them push new foliage out. Even if they don't bloom at all, yeah. then you'll be, you'll have a chance to cut them back a little bit later on. It's a good time, if nothing else, to t- tighten up some shrubs that perhaps have gotten overgrown a bit. Yeah. I've yeah. I've got uh, azaleas in my front yard 10 years. I cut them back two years ago, and they are leafing out right now with some even some blooms. Uh, and I've been covering them. So wow, you have Tyler. azaleas that have now been tenured. Is that what you're saying? Uh-huh. <laughs> they are definitely tenured. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. But I whacked them back anyway. Um, let's then, see. I have two Italian cypress. We 16- didn't get to the hydrangea. We didn't. Oh, the sorry. Question. We don't. They didn't say what Tyler kind of. Tyler is going fast. They did not say what kind of hydrangea, which is the tough part on that answer. Mm-hmm. But they're. Uh, uh, what they ask if they could take sun. Yes, how much was? sun? How much sun? If you go with a panicle hydrangea, which is like our best sellers, limelight, little lime, bobo, all of those uh, panicle style hydrangeas, those can <laughs> those. <laughs> those can handle full sun all day. Um, we used to have them here on the lot that never got a break from the sun. Y'all quit making fun of me. I messed up. Okay, quit. <laughs> all right. But yes, those can handle the sun all day long. The other species of hydrangea, I don't recommend full sun all day long. So give them a break in the afternoon if you can help it, and they'll typically be fine. Next. Okay. Yeah. Now, I have two Italian cypress, 16 foot tall. They are both brown. They appear to have died this winter. January, they turned brown. What might have been the cause of that? Was it a 100 degree yeah. summer? Yeah. Was it the 100-degree summer, the Christmas freeze? I'm ready to cut them down. but bum Yes, Italian cypress are a legitimate zone 7, if not 8. Zone 8, yeah. They are not going to be hardy here in the long haul. You need to be using something like DeGroot Spire Arborvita as an alternate. Uh, I something am DeGroot. That's, something that's a columnar, similar growth habit. Uh, Italian cypress are dead. They're, I can yes. promise you that. They're, I'm so they're sorry. They're Italian gorgeous. cypress doesn't live here even on normal winters. No. Right. Not no, even no. at all. No. Go to South Carolina annoying. if you wanted to tell Yeah, cypress. I've seen them in Memphis in some spots yeah. that do pretty well, but yeah. it's a little bit warmer in Memphis it than is. it is here. So, yep. Use yeah. Taylor juniper. That's another good one. Taylor well. is another That's really a, good one. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Caroline, we, we haven't heard from you at all. Let's get I'm back to the Instagram. Um, for a minute we got we got we so got many it. instagram questions but let me finish up we only got like one or two googles left okay. okay we have holly bushes in our front yard that have grown too high and cover the front window is it possible to cut them back if so how much without doing damage and when my god yes are you far want back. As, as far, far back, back as you want cut them to the dirt if you want Okay. Hollies are coming back, y'all. You need to do it before three thirty. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> don't forget that. Yeah, you and can't you, hurt a holly. And you once don't want to miss this first flush of growth. So cut them back now. Even yes. if they don't have a leaf on them, they'll still come back out. They definitely. Mm-hmm. Will. All right. I've chopped one down multiple times. It my, won't die. My brother-in-law was real happy because he thought his big old holly that he hates right next to his steps like turned horrible and looks dead. You know, dropped all of its leaves, yeah. all, all of its leaves. And he was like, "Yes, I'm so happy this thing died this year. I've been trimming this thing three times a year." <laughs> and I'm like, "Ah, sorry, bud. It's not dead. <laughs> it ain't dead. That's coming right back. It's gonna poke you right up them steps." All right, keep it moving. Now. Okay. Poke you right up. <laughs> uh, okay. Last uh, Google question, if I can find it. Uh-huh. I want to plant a fig tree, but I'm afraid the deer will eat it before it can even bear fruit. They've eaten everything else, and I can't convince my son to put up a fence. Well, convince him. Yes. <laughs> and it needs to be not just any fence. It needs to be like 15 feet tall. Well, eight feet. <laughs> At least. They can flat foot over a yeah. six-foot yeah. fence. Oh, easy. 
So, uh, yes, uh, yeah. they're, they're going to eat them because they eat everything <laughs> else. The only thing they don't eat are things that are uh, have Wild a strong – yeah. they, don't, they don't like things that have a strong scent to them. So yeah. Or and they don't really like conifers unless there's just nothing else to choose from. Yeah. I mean, they're not all that picky. But, yeah, you gotta, you're got you going to have to get a fence around it. I mean, they're going to get in there. Yeah. So – it's hard like to I said, convince him. Too. It's gonna happen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I right. never have deer bothering my fig. Well, get it, we, Tyler. Hey, we no. need to get Caroline in this. No, program. I'm just saying. No. I, Tyler's like I, absolutely not. I'm just saying. I yield the floor to Caroline. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Is it time? It's time. I know. Time. I know everyone's missed my voice, so uh-huh. it's back. <laughs> Evergreen foundation shrub, three to four feet. Some afternoon shade. Deer safe. I don't know if they mean safe or deer resistant. You're safe. Austin, here's the last part of the question. No boxwood. Sorry. Mm. Let me see. Let me, I, okay, we got a point. Cephalotaxis. Yeah. Foundation trail, three to four foot tall. <laughs> Cephalotaxis. <laughs> Someone yeah. needs Plum their you. glasses. Deer safe. Oh, God. Plum you. There you go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I feel... Not the oh, horizontal. Plum, yeah. It has to be the plum one. Mm-hmm. Well, that's just a... Um, that's just a, a common name for a cephalotaxis, yeah. Josh. They're I all love you. the family is a I plum do too. I don't know why they're called plum <laughs> Okay. but they are. I don't either. They're great plants. They really are. Really mm-hmm. sprawly. Really good. I always use the term space fillers because they're they, really they're, good at that. And there are some uh, some more you know, columnar kind of upright grower cultivars. Mm-hmm. We don't seem to have them very much because they sell out so fast. Right. Mm-hmm. But it's a good it's a good plant. It has enough winter hardiness and it will take the shade. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well. Huh. All right. Sidewalk border plant, something nice as I walk to my front door. They say lavender, question mark, or something else. I mean, that would smell lovely. Lavender would be great. Mm -hmm. As long as it's nice and well-drained and full sun, uh, lavender would be a good one. It doesn't always stay up and evergreen like through the wintertime, which is fine for Mm -hmm. a border. You know, you can... Borders don't necessarily have to be evergreen. We got a great selection right now of creeping flocks. And uh, candy tuft. If you're unfamiliar with candy tuft, that's a great little border plant. Huh. Beautiful so white cute. blooms. It Combined is with lavender. Combined with it. There Those you go. Those height differences. Uh huh. Wonder how wide she wants Color them to be. Color contrast. Yeah. Yes. My oh. front border, which is my favorite because I chose it, <laughs> is alliums, which is just an ornamental onion. They look somewhat similar to monkey grass a little bit, and hmm. but they're way way better. Uh, glossy little green leaves that are up right now. You know the onions they always pop up in your lawn first. You always see them poking up through similar with the ornamental onions mine are already up and probably about i don't know about six inches tall already and they do have an unusual fragrance to them it's mm-hmm. uh, it's not quite as pungent as the society garlic which is uh-huh. not actually a garlic but yeah but it does have a, a different kind of a fragrance to it so i think that's a good chance that deer don't like it but mm-hmm. it smell like onions yeah, a little bit. Whenever, oh, you, bit, whenever okay. you crush it, I mean, not necessarily okay. walking by it, but if you like, you know, were to pull a stem, you or would, step you on it on accident. Yeah, cool. like, like Tyler like, did to yours. He I did. would be concerned about, oh, about oh, that. Oh, I would be Caroline. a little bit concerned about the lavender spreading too much if oh she's gosh. wanting it. Uh, no, no, lavender rarely, doesn't. Not an issue here. You no, know, okay. it's a, it's a clumper. Burn by? It's a clumper. It's I've not. I've never had it spread. I want it to. If you don't have it in an area that drains well, as as Austin already mentioned. You're not going to have success with it anyway. So uh, if you right. need to make sure that one requirement is met, otherwise consider something else. Mm-hmm. Yep, definitely. You oh, hey, t- another one real oh. quick. Sorry. Mm. Seed them. Mm. Seed them. Oh, that one is great. Them. Let's That's talk about seed them. Seed them. It's too. another easy. one. It is easy. I Needs sent you that picture of my seed them that looked amazing a month ago. Uh, didn't even get hit with the freeze. Again, it doesn't like wet feet either. So mm-hmm. it, right. it, it, it'll do great in a spot that gets hot and dry. They're mm-hmm. very tough. Yeah, that picture of yours was really cute. They and just you know what to... I have planted next to it? What? Lavender. Oh. Oh. Well. Wow. <laughs> it's almost like they're meant to go together. <laughs> so yep. amazing. All right. Someone is new to gardening and they're asking if they need to fertilize their vegetables. Well, <laughs> you could. I mean, if you use our earth mix, you can just plant it right in there. And typically, you don't have to fertilize all that much on the, at least the first season. As Since you're new to gardening, soils you know, deplete nutrients as they grow plants, okay? So the plants are using them. So some of that nutrient gets depleted. So as the years go on, if you're using the same soil, yes, you ought to fertilize. Um, and then you also gauge this by looking at your plants. So I did a very first year garden last year in the dirt. And I never had to fertilize at all. And I based this on looking at my plants. Everything looked clean and green. Nothing was like yellowing or anything. The plants will typically tell you if they're like nutrient deficient, okay? So if they're looking green and they're upright and they're perky and happy, 
And typically they're fine down below, okay? But if you start seeing yellowing, like this off off green or yellowing, that's, you know, usually they're nitrogen deficient, which is that first number in your fertilizer. So let them kind of tell you. And since you're new, just do some stuff first. Just plant some yeah. stuff first and watch it grow and see how it is. And then they'll they'll kind of let you know. Yeah, one of the good things people need to consider doing if you're reusing soil that you've had from previous years is that you might need to just simply recharge it a little bit. Uh, Earth Mix Supernatural is a yes. great choice for that. And it will really replenish all the things that may have been stripped out, you know, endo and ectomycorrhiza, fungi, and humic acid, all the things that plants really love. It will boost it back up and you'll see the difference in your growth. You know, I was going to say last year with my veggie garden, I tilled or mixed in supernatural with all the beds and I never had to fertilize. And my vegetable plants were healthy. Uh, The production was really high. And the cool thing, Supernatural is not sold as fertilizer, but your plants don't know that. Don't tell them. Now, real, real quick, because I think everyone in this room is probably not a fan of using chemical fertilizers on a food crop. Uh, fair to I'm, say i think that's fair you, to say. a lot of folks do i mean you know I mean, no you, can, you you can uh, yeah, you it, but you just it, if you want to go organic or natural you really that's not the way to go but oh. i mean because you go to so, you go to go to hardy's on any day of the week early in the morning and you find the uh the gentleman sitting around the table they're going to tell you hit that with some triple 14 man <laughs> and roll yeah. on yeah uh-huh. the thing is is that veggie gardens typically yeah. are like long term projects right. you keep your veggie garden typically in the same spot every year you're not like jumping around the yard or whatever your raised mm-hmm. beds are permanent your in the ground is permanent so if it is a permanent long-term thing organics last so much longer and they give you just beneficial fungi and all these other things that that synthetic right. fertilizers really don't synthetic fertilizers obviously work they hit your plants very quickly but they're Bam. also lost very quickly okay right. they leach away you, so, you kind of need to decide which way you're going to go. go if yeah, you're going to really. do organic stay with organics if you're going to do chemical fertilizers well that's your choice hey, mm-hmm. hey david is that blue stuff a miracle uh actually uh, no that's not a miracle it's uh that's just fertilizer oh. liquid fertilizer oh, so there's okay. no it's like a magic marker there's really no magic there's ink in really? there. really yes that's okay but i mean that's why they tell you when you yeah, read the box yeah. it says do it every couple of weeks mm-hmm. well because yeah, yeah it, it burns after it about 10 days it's gone yeah. yeah and they want to resell you more you sure they do mm-hmm. make <laughs> okay. that money yeah. all righty for freeze protection can we leave the sheets on for a few days or remove and recover Unfortunately, it's annoying, but uh, remove it and recover. I mean, let those plants get that yeah. nice sunlight, you know, during the days. That'll just kind of warm them back up first off, and then just, you know, photosynthesis is happening. So they really want to see that shun- sunshine. And, man, I'm really tripping up on words today. You're yeah. doing I, I, great. I, I will say this. <laughs> don't beat yourself th- up. Th- <laughs> that if you don't, if it's very difficult, if you're, as long as you're using white sheets, you probably won't do any damage leaving them on there. No. It, and it's, we're only talking about three days yeah. of it. It may be that it's so hard to get them covered that you really, if as long as that's what you're using, yeah. you're probably okay. They will breathe enough and they won't build up enough heat where that it would be So the burgundy ones and the But you don't want to put ones. like a tarp. You, know, you'll, you may come out here today and see some tarps lying around. We don't use those right now because they had to be pulled off you can't put them on until the sun is almost down and you got to get them off as soon as the sun comes up so uh but they're very much uh they, they retain the heat and while that has benefits it also has negative attributes so if you're using the sheet you probably won't do any damage if you leave it on there. right yeah but if you could get it off it's okay yeah mm-hmm. My crepe myrtle is black with white spots. Is it dead or diseased? Help. And they said they're in zone seven here in Nashville. All right. Crepe myrtle that's black with white spots. I'm assuming that's right now. Um, If Hmm. that is the case, this is where I'm going with this. I'm thinking that last summer you probably had an aphid infestation, maybe. So you got a lot of aphids, which are tiny little bugs on the backsides of leaves, typically. They create a lot of honeydew, uh, which is just the fancy name for their excrement. And that excrement that sits on the leaves is very sticky and sugary, and it gets a fungus on it that turns black. Um, And this will persist mainly on the stems. So I'm assuming that's what's going on. That doesn't necessarily mean it's diseased or anything. Fungus is very, very common amongst all plants, um, and they can live with it. Some succumb if the fungus is really, really bad. Uh, But if it's on there and it's physically able to be removed, 
than physically remove it. I mean, go out there with like a you know a wet towel or something and just like wipe it down. I don't know how big it is, uh, but that is my guess on what's going on. Uh, but crepe myrtles are very, very hardy, very tough, and um, you know it's probably going to be able to live with that just fine. But if you can't stand it and it looks bad, then go out there and, and clean it off. Get your hose out. Try to wipe it down. Whatever you can do to try to physically remove it, and that'll be helpful. And then next spring and summer, look out for those aphids because aphids love yeah. crepe myrtle, and they'll be on it a lot, and you'll start to see that black sooty mold that nobody likes to see on plants. Yeah, and you're going to – it's going to be another one of those plants you're going to see some die back on. So yes. be prepared at some point here to do some cutting back. However, crepe myrtles are typically the oh. very last thing to show signs of new growth. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you do anything severe before the middle of May, you may be overreacting. So I'm just saying <laughs> be very patient with crepe myrtle. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've got Natchez crepe myrtle, they are the most tolerant of cold temperatures. So you'll be okay on that. Hey, Let's what? talk about Bates Nursery and Garden Center okay. for just a moment because that's where we are. Yes, we are. And um, we've got this entire array of plant material that mm -hmm. you're just dying to take home and put in the ground. But And we've got it all here, and we've got it inside, and we've got it under cover. Mm -hmm. And you probably ought to – if you're going to get it today, that's fine. But you need to wait until probably Tuesday before you go out with it. We've got these cold nights here. We don't want to see you get – damage on things uh -huh. so if you take it home it needs to go in the garage or in a basement until uh, you do that do your plan make yeah. sure you now, get there it may be the things right that are totally dormant that where yeah. it's no issue on at all but we do invite you to come out and see us we're open from nine until four o'clock monday through saturday it's noon to four on sunday yep. and uh this is one of those situations where that it's very nice that we have all of this extra storage area indoors that's in our uh, -huh. uh in our sales area so you can come in and shop inside even though it may be quite chilly outside yep. we have a, a a more temperature controlled situation uh, in our atrium area that connects everything from our checkout through the tropical area where caroline uh -huh. is through all of our trees through all of our shrubs you should say along with the japanese maples and then perennials and annuals on down the greenhouse and, all mm, inside mm, so mm, mm, come out and check those out and uh, we'll be glad to help you because this is all we do we don't uh have other things that we uh do you we don't do have, you don't sell light bulbs we don't sell light bulbs Air filters. So we, no 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 we're we're right. just we're horticulturalists and um we're here to help you get the answers obviously we've spent this morning answering a, a plethora, plethora of questions and we'll answer your plethora of questions just come out and see us we're conveniently located one mile north of briley parkway at exit 19 on white's creek pike that's just mm -hmm. minutes from uh, rivergate opry mills nashville west and i promise you this even if you're in downtown nashville it's worth the drive from anywhere uh if mm -hmm. you want to check out my uh, weekly blog post you can do it online or if you scroll down batesnursery.com you'll see there is a place where you can sign up for the newsletter and receive it to your mm -hmm. inbox that's the best way to get the most informed and up to the minute I, I write these every week one time so uh it's not like i have um i really try to be topical about where we are what's going on right now so check that out if you want to get that you can subscribe right there at the newsletter or come out and see us if you're a base rewards member they'll get you signed up so uh, -huh. uh come out and see us we're celebrating 91 years 91 uh, 91 years 91 josh i know i don't time. look it but uh Actually, my grandmother started our uh -huh. business way back in 32. Oh, Nanny. Nanny did. Over mm -hmm. 26th in Charlotte, we welcome, we, we actually uh, ask you to come out and see us. We're out on White's Creek Pike now. So that's a mile north. Come see us of Broadley Parkway, Bates Nursery and Garden Center, beautifying Nashville since 1932 and all this stuff that's in the studio today that all comes out of caroline's area yeah we, oh she, my we, gosh, we, got, we got the got tropical touch going on today oh well, yeah we went wild we decided that you know maybe this weekend we're not going to buy like outdoor plants because it's getting mm -hmm. a little chilly well so one thing these what? two in the corners are these are citrus <laughs> those, no, are ficus. those are ficus, ficus. ficus ali mm -hmm. wow yeah and the one of the things that we're very privileged to have is uh a really extensive mm. selection of tropicals cool and indoor plants. And so mm. we expect that Caroline's going to have a lot of questions in her area today. Mm -hmm. And I'm ready for them. I know you are. But speaking of questions, let's oh, go ahead yes. and get back. We've okay. got just a few more on my end. Prognosis for larger Japanese maples that leafed out early and couldn't be protected. Great question. Hey, Caroline, don't you have one that's leafed out early and you couldn't protect it? And 
I do, like? yeah. I didn't make it home early enough to protect mm. it. It's little, so some of the leaves froze, but it actually still looks fine. Yeah, mm. they Japanese maples are actually very, really pretty cold hardy. And if you do see, I, I understand, y'all, if you've got large trees, a 20-foot Japanese maple, how are you going to cover that? <laughs> you know, it's not, not possible. It's not going to happen. They've got to deal with that. And luckily, trees are very tough plants and they can come back from that they've got dormant buds they got buds that you know they're they're first shoots of buds or whatever that come out and shoot leaves um if they get damaged there's a secondary there are secondary mm -hmm. buds in there that can crack as well so if you see some injury which you might on the topmost leaves of your plant you will see regrowth out of those japanese maples it's not like it's just going to die you know like david said we're so used to doing this every year and since i've worked here for the past seven years we've covered and recovered and brought stuff in and and all of the move done this every single spring and all of your trees and plants have done this pretty much every single spring right. where those leaves uh -huh. have to feel some cold Cold, cold weather yes, and do. you don't see them die uh but you do see some injury so unfortunately you might see some injury over the next couple of days but they're not going to die they're going to leaf back out and they're going to be pretty trust me well the great thing That's about fine. the japanese maples right now in particular is that they're not severely juiced up they are they're pushing some new growth but they're not really juiced up which means that uh, whatever damage they get will be likely more on the superficial side than on the actual long lasting side so yeah, you know i've got wanted to tell y'all about this i've got an interesting phenomenon happening phenomenon <laughs> i've got a weeping japanese maple so a really tight green leaf weeper it's called ryusen mm. um it's a beautiful variety it's a tight weeper it doesn't get real right. fat it stays real tight on itself and it started to leaf out and all of my like there's some big leaves already and they're all on what i call the skirt so they're the skirt is starting to hit the ground um and the leaves that are the biggest are the ones that are around the ground and then as you work up the plant which you wouldn't think is the tiniest leaves even some buds that haven't even cracked yet so it's got all these leaves down at the bottom and none at the top so my theory is is that i've got rock mulch you know it's pea gravel so I'm assuming that maybe those lower buds were closer to that rock when we had those warm days and that warmed them up enough to where they cracked first and the topmost buds are still left behind and not near as far along. I think that's a good hypothesis. That's, that's a I mean, theory, I, not a know, phenomenon, it's though. A, it is a theory. You're you right. know, we don't want him to use words that he can't spell. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my yes. God. Cheatham Japanese County maple education. Are crazy. <laughs> I was talking to Austin and maybe Avoid Tyler. the use of obsequious. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, never. I'm not going to spell that. Um, but all of my Japanese maple are budding out on the north side. All of the leaves on the north side of my five Japanese maple are open, and the south side is not. See, that's interesting. A as well. That's crazy. very. That's a phenomenon. Very, yeah. 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 I don't know what it is. I'll have to. Uh, that may be cultivar specific, is what I would guess. If they're not the same. It's a Yankee Japanese maple. Well, so I mean, you would north? think that on the south side they uh, would be more advanced. Mm. Right. How, you would however. Think. Okay. Depending on the cultivar, some uh, tend to flush out earlier than others. They may be totally different cultivars, and mm -hmm. it just may be that the ones on your south side are the later uh, emergent of foliage. Rather well, than no, the, it's the side of the actual tree. Oh, like all of the five trees, the north side leaves are open, but the south side is not. Well, uh, how far is it from the house? Um, some of them are way out in my yard. My front yard is probably about an acre. Um, so well, yeah. they're, 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 they're just being over. considerate. They're yes. putting they on the are. show for you. That's <laughs> what it is. It's they're curb like, appeal. Morning. Yes, it Here is. I am. All right, we got a Miriam question. Miriam. Miriam. Miriam did not get her allium bulbs in the ground. Oh. And she's wondering, is it a fool's errand to do it now? Um, no, I don't think so at all. I mean, it, I got to get planted sometime. Yeah, that's I, true. I mean, but, don't let it sit in your house. To, I mean, till next fall or whatever. So you may as well do it. Mary. They're going to flower mean. late if they flower. They I will bought, flower I, late. Yeah, I and bought they're a, expensive. Yes, I, I bought a, a very nice uh, um, uh, elephant ear bulb that I'm glad I didn't put out in the ground. Oh yeah. yeah so mm -hmm. well, yeah, allium and uh, elephant ears are, of course. Different. Very different things. Oh, yeah, but, but, I, yeah. but they want to be out there with it. Anyway. But yes, but if you're going, if you've got allium, uh, Miriam, then make allium, sure. Allium, Miriam, Miriam, yes. allium. <gasps> Go ahead and get those in the ground and let's see what happens. They are, Tyler they is are already a, a spectacular yeah. springtime flowering there. or early summer. Yeah, they're need to get some of those. Tyler has put a picture up here on the studio yes, monitor. Yes, I have. Oh, God. <gasps> what oh. is it? So this what is, is a question from my mom. God. From Mama. Yeah. Sorry, hey, Mama. Is that actually going out over the wire? Hey, or is Shirley. It, okay, it will be here in a moment. Right. Oh. Right. Shirley, what is that? Oh, eucalyptus. Yeah, Look, is, it's still green. This is ah. eucalyptus, but she's got these. It's a, kind of turned this reddish with some spots on mm -hmm. it. And her other one is fine. Are there pandas in the area? 
that wow. one. Wow. Look at that. that did she one's... leave him outside all winter or mm. did she take him in for the... Because I know uh, that's I think the glacier, the hardy. Yes, the glacier one. And I've, I had the same thing happen with mine because we, we got uh, sun gosh, and mother plants. Oh my god! I say she has a glaciers. decision here. So yes. I'd say either cut both of them back to where they match if that's important to yeah. you. Yeah. Or just cut the one and let it come back Gorgeous. out. So, okay. You know, cool. But, but it, the one's going to be a lot more bushy than if you cut it back. Yes. If you want them to match, cut them both. Mm-hmm. It's wow. not going to hurt them. Well, see, I cut mine back because mine looked the same way, just kind of out of instinct. And I'm seeing these little tiny buds show up at the For bottom sure. of them. That's right what here. happens. These, these little red nubs. Okay. So, uh, And then one other, one other question she had was she overwintered a king fern, and it's got new growth. And she's wondering if she needs to cut it back just to make it uniform for it to flush out again. No. 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 You said no. <laughs> wow. Well, ferns are kind of funny. They're a whole different ball game because they send out a whole frond, you know, and you don't necessarily really cut that and then see like new growth from that leaf. It all comes, you know, What's from that basil What are you talking about the old growth, growth though? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh, the old growth. Yeah. If it starts looking bad, you can remove a you know, frond here and there yeah. as you go along, but there's no need to go through and cut it back overall necessarily. No, mm-hmm. but I mean, if, yeah, if it's old yucky looking fronds yeah it's take fronds those specific i gave my right. boston a full haircut and now it's got a lot of new new little that's the way to do it with ferns mm-hmm. with that old foliage yeah. okay let's get to yeah. just a handful more questions okay. i also have a couple live ones okay right. well, live. take yeah. it away tyler all right uh well nina said my neighbor has taped black plastic bags on the defoliated hollies should i knock on their door and tell them no. about the cover i, I wouldn't talk really to mad. these people no <laughs> I don't. I don't think it's going to matter mm-hmm. on those. Uh, uh, yeah, it's you've got. Yes, you're making contact with the plant, but you're you you've got black plastic on dead stems. Yeah, and but so it's, it is a, your structure. Effectively, is going to get much warmer than it should get. Uh, you know, we we try to educate people the best we can, and sometimes, to the HOA sometimes you need to let other people do a uh, little research for you. Maybe that's what this falls into. Is Uncle let, Phil uh, Valentine used to call that stupid tax, didn't he? Well, yeah. I'm not going to call it stupid. I'm just going to say that we're going to allow them to take an alternate route and see yeah. where it goes. Hey, you know what? Maybe Why? they're maybe they know something we don't know. Really, maybe they're could gonna, be. Maybe they're going to heat up those hollies enough to where they're going to leaf out quicker than all of ours would. Uh, Who maybe. knows? Plants are funny. Yeah, yeah. So, my my hollies, my needle points are butted up, and uh, they have some tip dieback now at the black, probably about a couple inches. Yeah, yeah. but they're they're ready to flush. Oh, it's they're just not flush. quite uh-huh. there yet. Um, Alexander on the Bates Facebook, I need an evergreen for privacy. Anything that will not get past twelve feet. Mm. Emerald. Yeah, emeralds. I mean, you can. They'll get around. Okay. Emerald arborvitaeus. That's about what they get up to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and we don't need to say a whole lot more than that. They're, okay. they're the most widely used screening plant for sunny locations that there is in this part of the world. So that's so. all I've got over here. Oh, one, okay. one more quick live one from, uh, from uh, the Facebook page uh, is now the time to feed my trees. What kind of food would you recommend? Yeah, now is the time to feed your yep. trees for sure. And uh, recommendations, you know, we sell all of our Espoma products are all organic, and we mm-hmm. sell like Tree Tone. Um, specifically for trees. Now you could use almost any other products, and you yep. know as long as you're getting something down, uh, you know you're ahead of the game. Now, I don't know how big your trees are. Large trees don't really need to be fertilized, y'all. If but they're they young got, trees, though, then mm-hmm. yeah, it never hurts. Though. You got big bags of the stuff if you need a bunch of it too. Saw it. Mm, we do like forty pound bags. Yeah, forty oh, pound. Yeah. You can get a lot of trees done real quick. You can get so many trees. Okay, what else we got? <laughs> Two to three foot evergreen part. Full shade shrub for around a fire pit, ideally native and flowering. All right. Ooh. Let's go. You know what? Let's go chokeberry on this one. Oh, okay. I don't nobody know about chokeberry, Harley. It's a don't beautiful know. little white, white blooming plant that has berries that persist through the winter and has excellent fall color. Now, will it get bigger than two to three feet? Yes. yes. <laughs> there are varieties that are supposed to stay smaller. There's one that's called, it's, it, how cute is this? It's called ground hug. Oh my god. Who named that plant? I don't know, but it's pretty cool. It's literally it goes like straight sideways. We have some at the nursery Round right now and you can thug. see their stems. Um and they like literally stay really low. Um but like I said, it's an excellent native plant. Joy loves them. She's our native queen. Um and you know, they're 
It's a good little plant. Try that out. Come out and check it out. All right. One more native question to get Uh-oh. in. What native flowering varieties do you have for creating privacy? <laughs> Chuck Berry. Ooh, flowers. <laughs> Chuck Berry. There. Native Let's go back flowers Chuck Berry. creating privacy. Um, mm. How about... Crossvine. Crossvine. If you put up a trellis or a fence a line. line. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, on a vine. Uh, how about uh, deciduous holly? That's cool. It has berries that persist over the winter time as well. Not that uh, much privacy in the winter, not but great, no. but I mean a little bit. We don't have a ton of evergreens here, y'all, that are native. We just don't. No. Um, you know, juniper comes to mind, but even that's not hemlock is it's not yeah. it's Canadian. Yeah. It's but, yeah, I mean it's kind of it's, it's become naturalized. And you do flowering. see some there are, in East Tennessee, you do see some really large ones. So I don't know that it's considered native, but it's almost. Yeah. What about Large Father Gila. There you go. That's a Large good Father Gila. Excellent fall color once again. It's a very stinging plant. they have plant. dwarf varieties, but they get up, what, 10, 8, 10 feet? Yeah, they, they do get, get eight, 8 feet. Yeah. I mean, they're kind of slow to get there. Um, once again, Chuckberry. I mean, Chuckberry, a lot of the native varieties, just your straight species, gets very large. I mean, yep. they can get upwards of 12 feet tall. Mm-hmm. Beautiful flowering plant with berries that persist. Mm-hmm. Great fall color. Wow. Wow. Chuckberry. Guys, we're, wrong with that? We, have, we have gotten through an hour here. Do we have oh. any last questions that we need to get out here? You know, we've got some just on the Instagram, which we will answer in our stories uh, okay. midweek next week. So if we didn't get to your question and you are watching, don't worry. We will answer it. Check back in our stories. Nah, we're we just going to ignore you that's we're not we would not ignore this was a uh, rapid fire boy aren't you uh, kidding thanks for everyone for tuning in and for all the great participation here in studio josh thanks for being here today thank you for being here you know what i was in the neighborhood (laughs) so we invite you to come back and see us next week of course this is available anytime 24 hours a day 366 days including all the back episodes so check it out The At Home Show, Josh Carey, David Bates. We'll see you next time.